Hi everyone, it's April with Hair 101 and today I'm going to show you how we got from this before picture to this after picture on this cute model. It's on thinner, finer hair, so I give you lots of good tips, so make sure you keep watching and give me some comments below and let me know what you guys want to what you want to see next and what you think about this haircut. Okay, let's get started. So whenever I start doing short haircuts that aren't dramatically different, like we're kind of just trimming up what she has, this is going to be the most length I think I take will be back off of here. But whenever I start with these short haircuts, I like to comb the front part of their hair the direction they're going to be wearing it and she wears kind of a side bang so I just like to comb it that way just because if I don't and it starts to dry out a little bit even if I spray it again sometimes it just holds that part if you have a middle part or whatever so I've noticed that it's easier for me just to do that so I kind of just have combed it all where it will be when she kind of wears like when she wears it and I'm going to start in the back because that's where we're cutting off most of the length right at the roll of her head right here. And I'm just going to kind of part from that point over to the ears. Right behind the ears actually. And her hair is pretty fine so I'm not going to need to use clips for this part. I can just kind of comb it over and push it down with a comb. Now I'm not going to do all of her haircut with the razor, but I am going to do just the very bottom. And when you're cutting hair that's a little bit on the fine, thin side, you want to make sure that you're not digging the razor in too close to their scalp. You want to make sure you're keeping it away from the scalp and do really shallow, short movements. Because if you go really deep, it's going to remove too much of the thickness and we're not really trying to remove thickness with this we're just kind of trying to do like a softer line when we do a cut instead of like the thing with the fine hair that I've noticed and I'm sure you guys have noticed this also if you cut it with a pair of shears really blunt and you do the whole haircut really blunt it shows every single line and it's very hard to blend it out because the hair is so fine it just it really doesn't hide the mistakes very easy so I find it easier to get this nice soft line with the razor at the neckline. If you want a really hard line, that's fine and you can do it that way, but you'll probably end up going back in and softening it up a little bit because it just looks so harsh. So now that I got my length on the bottom, I'm gonna switch over to my shears. And these are the shark fin swivel thumb, double shark fin. Great pair of shears, I love these. I'm gonna go ahead and take a part right like an inch down the middle of her head. And once again, I don't really need to use clips because you can see as, not everyone's like this, but with her hair, I can just push it that way and it's staying, so we're good. So now with this, I'm gonna just lift it up and I found it easier to lay my hand against the neck this way to get it nice and tight because it can follow the shape of their head. If you kind of go like this, your elbow and your shoulder are so tight and it's just not a good angle because then you're just like, it's not work smarter, not harder. So just go ahead and put your fingers in like this and then you're going to establish how much you're going to be taking off. And I think that that's a pretty good angle right in there. So I'm just going to, okay, so I'm going to go back in here and just kind of soften that line out. I'm going to point cut the rest of this actually. So I just explained how I don't love doing those really hard lines. So I'm doing a pretty good chunk on my cut. You guys can see that there, how it just kind of softens it up. And then when it lays down, it's soft. Then I'm going to take half of that section and another half inch and it's going to be moving. So we're going to move the center of that. So I'm not over directing it back over to that middle section. I'm pulling it straight out from where the new section is. And then I'm going to go ahead and use that hair that I pulled 
from the other section. And if you lose it, you can push. You can push the hair with your shears or with your comb. You can kind of see the length right in there. It's harder to see on fine hair, especially if you're point cutting because the line's not really blunt in there, but that's okay. As long as you, like I said, push the hair a little bit and find where that length is, you can follow it. And use your estimator too. Like everyone has a little estimator in their head. You'll get better at that later on, but Obviously, I'm not going to put my fingers right against her head because I knew on the last section it wasn't there. It was a little bit pulled away. I can see those cut pieces. And having my hands against her head helps a lot too because I can see exactly where those other sections were when I go like that. And you keep doing that all the way over to this right ear. Okay, now I'm going to go over to the middle again and just go slightly to the left and grab that next section. And you can see that I'm re-combing. I'm not dropping the section, I'm just readjusting that angle of the hair when I get a little bit lower just to roll out her neck a little bit there. See when I'm up higher, And then I do one more comb down low just to make sure I'm getting that angle. It's a little bit trickier to see the guide because you have to pull the hair this way, but you should be able to see it if you keep looking. And if you can't see the guide and you're totally lost, go back and start from the middle again and just take smaller sections and you'll probably find where the little mistake happened where it got a little bit longer. And just like I did on the other side, I'm just gonna kind of take off this corner down here at the bottom. Also, if you lose your guide and you're not sure where it is, you can also cross check the back like this, just by pulling the section this way. See, there's a little bit longer piece in there. And just move down. Cross check this higher spot. So I kind of cross check all like this level first and then I go down and do this one also. And then just put your head down a little bit. And then we're gonna go down right here. Same thing. I'm gonna pull this out a little bit and just chip into this all along the bottom of her hair. And that's gonna leave the length so you're not like shaving it and making it look really thin, but it's gonna help it to lay in together a little bit better. So if I do anything else down here, it'll be when it's dry, just because I'll be able to see if there's anything that needs to be tweaked a little bit later. But now that I have this bottom section done, I'm gonna move up here to the back. And what we're gonna do is just make sure that this section blends in, and I'm not taking a ton off, so I'm gonna take like an inch in the middle again, and I'm just gonna pull it out. And you can see right in here, there's a little bit of a difference between that first guide. And it should be pretty easy to follow this now because you have that whole bottom section cut and you have your guide right in there 
and we're just taking a little bit of that length off and we're doing deep plank cuts. And this deep plank cutting, it makes such a big difference in finer, thinner heads of hair. You guys are gonna see blunt cutting is not always the best option. Sometimes it is, but it's not always. This is one of those cases. You can see that it has a little bit more of a round shape to it now. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do the front. And I'm gonna leave the sides to kind of blend in at the end. Don't ask me why, it's just because that's what I wanna do. I want to get this bang in how we want it, and then I can kind of blend it around her face. So, I'm just going to pull it over this way. And so we're going to just kind of slide cut a few pieces of her bangs. And you have to be really careful not to take too much. And then I'm also gonna trim. You see how like there's hollow spaces now? And then on short haircuts, it's always fun to just to go over the, the eye that they part their hair on. And I just kind of shorten that up a little bit more. Kind of making a little window so their eye can peek through and not have hair sticking them in the face all the time. I'm even going to take my razor right here, just in this little spot. There we go. So now you can see that it's like a, a soft look. And I didn't deep, dig deep with the razor, it was pretty shallow. So now I'm going to take the perimeter on this and blend and just kind of soften this line. You can see this is from where we cut before, it's softened. And then the bangs are kind of soft and then this just kind of doesn't fit anymore. So we're going to take this up. And we don't need to change it a ton, we're just going to change the perimeter. Sometimes, like people are not going to get mad at you if you, if, like if they want, they might be growing out certain parts of their hair. A trim is not always just, especially if it's a new client, it's not always just, oh, copy exactly what I had last time. If they're new, they might be coming to you because they want to try something a little bit different. So don't be afraid to leave some length in some places and just kind of change the texture of it a little bit because that it does a lot. You can even see in here, the shape is completely different and it's gonna lay completely different too and we can still put some layers in that to change it a little bit. That's, that's a lot better, there we go. Okay, then I'm gonna turn her all the way around this way so you can get it in here. Okay, same thing over here. You can see we need to just soften that line up around her face. And I'm going to go from where we cut those bangs and just kind of, her hair is getting a little bit dry. There we go. Okay, so now we just need to finish up with the interior on this top and side section. So now that we have the bangs cut how we want and the back, we have two guides to go from. So we are going to start, I'm on her left side and I'm taking about an inch and a half. I can take bigger sections because there's not, we're not working with massive amounts of hair. So it's a bigger section, but it'll work because I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to take it straight up and you can see right here, this is the guide from the back. I'm just going to go in and point cut. And I don't need to take a ton off of the bangs because I've already done that. So just 
texturing that. And now that I have that middle guide, I can split that one in half and just kind of pick up sections. And I'm going to pull these straight up because I do want to leave a little bit more thickness around her ear. I don't want her ear to be like her hair to be see-through by her ear. So I'm just pulling this straight up. Okay, so now I'm going to go down into the side and I am going to layer it a little bit. So right below or right behind her ear, so right behind her ear, I'm just going to take a section out and I'm just going to point cut again because that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Not because why, why are we doing that? <laughs> so it's just a little bit long still. And I want to soften up that line, so we're just chunking it out. Okay, same thing on this side. So now we need to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to start over here on the left and lift it straight up. Don't lose your place. Looks like I already did this, did I? No, I don't think I did. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, now we did. All right. So now I turned her around, but I'm standing in front of her and I'm pulling this out from the left side of her ear, right behind her ear. And I'm going to do the same thing we did on the other side. We have our soft guide here and then some hard in the middle, hard lines in the middle. We're going to just soften that out. So now she wants to get some volume right here in her crown area without having to curl it. And here's what I do to do that. Okay, I know everyone's gonna be like, razor, what? But this is, it works. The thing is, is that we're not really making her hair look thinner because what we're doing is we're just being really conservative with this. And we're just taking out a teeny bit, but we're not going any deeper than that. We're staying, um, we're this much for her hair needs to stay there so that it can push up the longer pieces of hair. The shorter pieces of hair are going to stand up and the longer pieces of hair are gonna curl around them. So you have to be really careful, but I'm gonna just go through, starting right here at the back of her head. And I need to get it wet again. Another wonderful joy of thin hair that is, I'm actually a little bit jealous of is that it dries really fast. So make sure you keep it moist if you're razoring. Okay, so I'm going to start right here and just take it up and very, very conservatively take out a few little pieces. You're not doing much, but it will make a difference. Don't go crazy on the razor, please. If you have someone with this same type of hair and haircut that you're doing. And I'm going to do the same thing right down in here. You can see, for some reason, we all are just blessed with this really large amount of hair right in here. And we don't really need that much of it. So I'm going to go in here and just same thing, lightly take out a few little pieces just to soften that up. Same thing right in here. It's really heavy right behind the ear. And then if you want, you can
And this has a guard on it, so I'm not scared of cutting her skin, if that's what you're thinking. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this Stay High 18 High Hold Gel, gel to Mousse, just a teeny little, oh, that's a lot. Less than that, and too much came out, so I'm gonna get rid of some of it. Just a little bit goes a long way. It turns into a mousse from a gel. It's kind of like shaving gel, but not. It's a lot stickier. And I'm just gonna work it through the top of her head where she wants her lift. And we're already getting tons of lift, holy cow. <laughs> so that and I think that's the only thing I'm gonna use on you right now. We'll use some products after. Okay, so another tip with blow drying short hair, if you want a lot of body, you're blow drying it the opposite way that it's going to actually lay. That way, when it does lay back down, it's nice and full, so. You already probably do that, huh? No? So, and if I just see any little spots that look a little bit too blunt still, I'm just gonna take my texture shears. These are really fine. And just kind of blend it in. Cause like I said, this thickness and texture of hair really shows the lines a lot. And so if you do need to blend, blend a couple out, it's okay. Don't be afraid of doing a little bit more cutting when your clients dry. In fact, almost every haircut I do, I fine tune it when it's dry. If you need to shoot the blow, dry, blow dryer through it, just to get rid of any loose hair, you can. Okay, let me give you one last spin of the final product to her haircut's done. You can see that it's really soft and blended. And that's the good thing about bl um, blending the haircut while you're cutting, instead of cutting blunt and then going back. It's twice as fast, obviously. But also, you're cutting the style into the hair, so she doesn't have to go home now and fight the blow dryer and try to like get rid of these little lines with pomade and crazy curling irons and all that stuff because there aren't any harsh lines in there anyway. So it should just be a really quick blow dry, maybe a little bit of round brushing up here, hairspray, pomade, the bangs, you're done. So I hope you guys liked it. Thank you so much for being my little model. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, I forgot, you gotta hit subscribe below. Click the button to subscribe. And give me a thumbs up, you guys. I'm in my new salon, I haven't done the salon tour yet. I'm sorry, I'll get to that soon, I promise. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and don't forget to follow me on Periscope. And do I say Facebook? I didn't say Facebook. And make sure you follow me on Facebook as well. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time.